Let's define first what is disaster. Disaster is a serious disruption occurring over a short or long period of time whether man-made or natural that causes great damage or loss of life. As a matter of fact, more than 2.7 billion people were affected and $1.3 trillion were lost between the year 2000 and 2011 due to disasters. Now, for our own safety, for our family, for our property, and for our community, let us think about how we will manage and control a disaster. Disaster management and disaster control it includes the development of disaster recovery plans and the act of limiting or mitigating the effects of disasters, which will help us to minimize the risk of disasters and for handling them when they do occur and to prepare us to protect our lives and properties before, during, and after a disaster. Example is that when there's an earthquake. We know that we can prevent natural earthquakes from occurring but we can significantly mitigate their effects. Preparation for earthquake. Before earthquake, prepare your house or workplace. Prepare an emergency supply kit, make it accessible all times. Learn to use the first aid kit, fire extinguishers, alarms, switching off water lines, gas tanks, and circuit breaker. During the earthquake, we must have proper response during shaking. Let's apply the drop, cover, and hold technique or stay in the safer part of the room. Stay calm and alert. Watch out the falling objects that may cause injury. After earthquake, evacuate. As soon as the shaking stops, take the fastest and safest way out. Expect aftershocks and be updated. Monitor the situation from the radio. Check yourself and others for injury. Speaking of injury, there is an appropriate first aid and bandaging to someone who was injured. To prevent accidents, to prevent added injury or danger, to prevent suffering or death, to train suffering or death, and to provide proper treatment when emergency occurs. There are six qualities that we must possess to become a good first aider. First, be gentle. You should not cause pain in handling the victim. Second, be observant. You should notice all signs in the body of the victim. Third, be resourceful. You should make the best use of things at hand. Fourth, be sympathetic. You should know how to comfort the victim. Fifth, be tactful. You should not alarm the patient as it may cause a nervous breakdown. Sixth, be cheerful. If the person has a happy expression, you can inspire confidence in the victim. Four examples or ways of bandaging step by step. Steps in applying open face arm sling bandage. Step 1. Put the apex of the triangular bandage below the armpit with one of the two ends at the top of the shoulder. Second step. Bring the lower ends of the triangular bandage over the arm at the top of the shoulder around the back of the neck over. And third step, tie both ends using the square knot. Right over left, then left over right. After that, twist the apex and tuck the corner of the sling at the elbow. Steps in making underarm sling bandage using the open face. First step, place the apex corner of the triangular bandage below the armpit with one of the two ends at the top of the shoulder. Second step, position the lower end of the triangular bandage over the arm passing under armpit towards the back of the neck. Third step, tie both ends of the bandage using the square knot. Right over left and left over right.
steps in applying a cravat bandage to the head. First step, cover the wound with a dressing and place the middle of the bandage over the wound. Second step, cross both ends of the bandage and gently pull and drop them in opposite directions around the head. And third step, tie both ends in square knot making sure that it is fully tight. Steps in applying a cravat bandage to the open palm. First step, apply a dressing to the wounded area and lay the mid of the cravat bandage over the palm with the ends hanging on both sides. Second step, bring the end of the cravat from the little finger across back of the hand rolling it upward over the base of the thumb gently and slightly pull it downward across the palm. Third step, Hold the thumb end of the cravat and roll it across the back of the hand and pull it over the palm towards the hollow portion of the palm in between the thumb and the palm. Fourth step, take both ends to the back of the wrist of the hand and roll them crossing each other and then roll them up over the wrist and cross the both ends again. Fifth step, Roll both ends at the back of the hand and tie with a square knot at the top of the wrist. 